You're listening to More Than a Song, Episode 5. Hello, and welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. This week we will be looking at Dara McLean's song, Wanted. There is so much to unpack in this song. I really struggled to choose a verse to focus on this week. And I ran through some very familiar ones before finally settling on this precious gem in Isaiah 41, 9. It says, For I have chosen you, and I will not throw you away. If that doesn't say that you're wanted, I don't know what does. Well, other than this. You are wanted to every broken heart. He stands with open arms. You are verse and this song reminds you that you are wanted and he will not reject you or cast you aside. Your father chose you and you're wanted. Now you know I can't teach you this verse without addressing the context and if you look at the headings found in your Bible you will see that this verse is in a section titled something like God's help for Israel. Each translation may have a slightly different title but in the New Living Translation Bible that I was looking at It said, God's help for Israel, and it's in the book of Isaiah. And in the first chapter of Isaiah, we see that these are the visions that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And so it tells us that these, this whole book is uh, based on the visions that Isaiah saw. And it goes on to say that he saw these visions during the years when Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah were kings of Judah. So that places us squarely in the historical context. So Isaiah's calling as a prophet was primary. This is just a little background story, a little background information. But his calling as a prophet was primarily to the nation of Judah, which was the southern kingdom, and to Jerusalem. By this time, Israel as a nation had split into two kingdoms, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, Israel being the northern kingdom. Judah being considered the southern kingdom. And so his calling was to the southern kingdom and to Jerusalem, and he was to urge the people, or his visions led him to urge the people to repent from their sins and return to God. He also foretold the coming of the Messiah and the salvation of the Lord. There's wonderful vignettes within all of the the current visions for the current generation and the foretelling of the Messiah at a distant future, and even some events still to come in the last days, such as the second coming of Christ. And so these verses are in this context, of course, written directly to Judah and to Jerusalem, the southern kingdom. So if we look at the verse before and the verse after our memory verse this week, or we'll look at all three verses, it says, But as for you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, my chosen one, descended from Abraham, my friend. I I have to stop there. One day, I hope that God will say of me, Michelle, my friend. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It says, I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying, you are my servant. This is God speaking, okay? And he says, for I have chosen you, and I will not throw you away. Of course, that's our memory verse this week. He goes on to say, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Now, there are so many places in the New Testament that confirm that we are chosen. So just because we are not of Hebrew descent, just because we didn't live in the time that Isaiah had these visions, 
does not mean that this verse is not for us. Uh, but we are chosen because of Christ. And so let's jump to the New Testament just for a minute and see what Peter has to say about it. He describes us much like the Old Testament described the people of Israel because he says in 1 Peter 2 verse 9, You are not like that. You are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. So you can see here, you've got this Old Testament story happening. And the Old Testament story was pointing to the time when God would be the redeemer for all people, not just Israel. That Israel's story and the promises that are for Israel are for us as well. Again, I say all of this to say that even if this verse was originally spoken to the Israelites, we can take it as our own if we belong to Christ. And he has chosen you and he will not throw you away. Now, last week I mentioned the fact that we have an enemy and he is the accuser. And the Bible clearly teaches that Satan is our enemy. In one area of scripture, in Revelation chapter 12, he is described as the one deceiving the whole world. The accuser of our brothers and sisters and the one who accuses them before our God day and night. If you don't think that we have an enemy that is accusing us, he accuses us in our own ears and he accuses us before God. He goes to God the Father and accuses us day and night. I want you to take this enemy very seriously, but I do want you to realize that he is, he has been uh, victoriously overcome. But not only, again, that does he accuse us day and night before God, I said he accuses us in our own ears. Remember how I mentioned that it only took three chapters of the story of this world? Just three chapters into Genesis before Satan begins to question God and his intentions and plant a seed of doubt in the heart of man that grows into mistrust, that blooms into the flower of unbelief, that is ultimately sin. So you don't have to go far to hear the talking points of the enemy. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not attractive enough. You can't. You'll never. No one cares what you think. You think you're special? Did God really say? Why would God allow this? He must not really love you. The accuser wants you to believe that God does not want you now or perhaps that he never really did. Were you a mistake? I love the lyric in this song. But all of your life you couldn't shake The lies in your head saying your mistake But you were made Each of us has a story And I wish that we could talk face to face -to -face about yours I really do Because I would love to hear your heart And kind of hear what the accuser is saying And try to help you find scriptures to battle that because the voice of our heavenly father, it needs to be stronger in the lives, in our lives and in our minds. The accuser is not just the accuser. He's the deceiver. I just told you that he, he's called the deceiver of the whole world. That, that's what he's about. He's about lies and he's about accusing you and accusing God and telling lies and assigning character that's not there. Unfortunately, I know that we can't um, sit face to face but I really hope that my story might help shed light on how your Heavenly Father's voice can reign supreme over the voice of the accuser. So I, su I suppose by the world's definition, my existence would be considered a mistake. I love what my pastor teaches. He says, there are no accidental children, just accidental parents. And so I guess my mom was an accidental parent. She was an unwed mother living states away from family and support, and she got pregnant uh, with me to a man who just had no intention of participating and probably just assumed that she would take care of it, and she did consider taking care of it uh, until she had just decided that she just couldn't, couldn't abort me. She had considered it, and as a side note, incidentally, the doctor let her hear my heartbeat after she decided to keep me. Um, which, of course, just confirmed 
in her, her heart that her decision was right, that this was a life and that she couldn't take a life. And so she contacted my grandparents whose lives had been transformed by Christ and they encouraged her to go to Idaho and live with them and have me. And I tell you this because the lie of the enemy was, fl- was thwarted in my life from the beginning. My grandparents poured truth into my spirit. They taught me that I was formed, planned by God himself, and wanted. They told me that he was everything an earthly father could never be. They, tr- they taught me to trust him as Abba, Father, or Daddy. And I trusted him from the beginning. I believed them, and I believed the scripture that tells me about him. Of course, on earth, I had their unconditional love. I had the unconditional love of my mother, who from the moment she heard my heartbeat, wanted me. But I truly believe I avoided a lot of pain through just flat out believing what the scripture says about what God thinks about us. And I pray that you can begin to trust him too, that you would allow his voice, his father, heavenly father, sovereign voice to be louder in your spirit, in your heart, and in your ear than the voice of the deceiver or the accuser. Who would you rather listen to? Your heavenly father who formed you, created you, and has plans for you? Or would you rather listen to the accuser whose job all day long is to accuse you before God? Now, I would love it if you would commit one day to reading through the Bible because it is impossible in a 20-minute podcast to go over every area of Scripture to prove that God planned for you, wants you, and has good plans for your life if you surrender. But I do encourage you this week to sit in one area of Scripture and soak it in. And when I say sit here, I mean read it every day. Read it slowly. Read it to yourself. Read it out loud. Read it with a spouse, a child, or a friend. And the area that I'm talking about is one of my favorite areas of Scripture. It's Psalm 139. And here are just a few highlights. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I want you to read it on your own and sit there and and just soak in it all week. But here's a few, uh, few verses. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know what I'm going to say before I even say it, Lord. (laughs) That's good and bad, right? He knows everything about us and he knows when we're going to open mouth and insert foot. That's what I always think of when I read that verse, but maybe it'll bring comfort to you. You made all of the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. I love that that word picture. And when I was pregnant with my first daughter, Emily, we got this beautiful full color book from our doctor. And it showed each um, week or month, I guess it was every month, how the baby or the fetus looks in the womb as it was growing and really kind of highlighted this is when the eyelashes are being added and here's when the heart's being formed and here oh they've got fingers now and oh they've got eyebrows and it was just so fascinating to look and to read about all of the intricate parts how could you not believe that we are created when you see all of those intricate parts and here the psalmist David is just praising God for that And it goes on to say, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. That, dear friend, tells me that you are wanted. You were created. You were planned for. You were formed. You are loved. You are wanted. And he has a plan for you. From the day you were born and took your first breath, you opened your eyes and in came the light. He was watching you. One final thought. You are wanted by your creator who knows everything about you and has plans for your life. And I've heard it said he loves you just as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you as you are. 
If you're wanted and he has a purpose for you, it's time to wake up. Bask in the truth that he has chosen you and will not throw you away and begin seeking what that purpose is. In another book, God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah to the people of Israel. He was also a prophet to Israel. And he had prophesied that they would have to endure hard times. In his prophecy, they actually, he actually said that they would have to continue to be captured and exiled for another 70 years. And then he follows it up with this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Now, his lesson to the Israelites here, again, can be claimed as our own. If we seek him with all our hearts, we will find him. He is just asking us to call upon him, come to him, pray to him, and he will hear us. Now, I will say this. I see a lot of passion in other areas. I see other things that we do with all our hearts. I see sports uh, players play all with all their hearts. I see singers on these TV shows and reality shows singing with all their hearts. But are you truly seeking God with all your heart? Because if you are, he has a promise connected to that, that you will find him. This verse does remind us that his timing might not be what we were hoping for. I mean, 70 years is kind of a long time, but he did promise it and he fulfilled it. Read your Bible or the history books They both tell the same story. He fulfilled his promise. And I'm just, I'm I'm really struggling. There are so many scriptures. I don't want to overwhelm you though. So I want to bop back to one that we already talked about earlier in the episode. 1 Peter 2, 9. I mentioned it earlier again, where it says you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. And as a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. As a result of being chosen, you can show others the goodness of God. So what could that look like this week? How can you show others the goodness of God? I want you to think about that and then tell me in the comment section under my show notes or on Facebook or on Twitter. This week, this is my challenge. How can you show others the goodness of God because you are wanted and so are they? Now, before we leave the episode today, I have just a few quick announcements. I am on Facebook and Twitter, and I'd love for you to follow me there. And there are quick links at the top of my homepage, michellekneesat.com. And while you're on the homepage, take a moment to enter your name and email address in the sign-up box. By doing this, you will be notified each Monday when a new episode is posted And it will include a link to free memory verse resources that I create exclusively for my mailing list. Now, this is still a fairly new podcast with a growing audience. And every time one of you shares it with someone else, my audience grows. And I would be honored if you would consider sharing this episode with your friends. There are quick share links at the top of each post, michellekneesat.com. You can share through Facebook, Twitter, and email. And this week's post will be found at michellekneesat.com forward slash Five. Finally, my next podcast will be on Hawk Nelson's song, Words. And if you have a question about this topic or even just a comment about the song, you can leave me a voicemail message at michellekneesat.com forward slash podcast question. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. I'd also be grateful if you would rate my podcast on iTunes. That helps tremendously with keeping my podcast visible so people who've never heard it can discover it. Just go to michellekneesat.com forward slash review and it will take you to the page that you can click to launch iTunes and leave a review. If you've already done this, thank you so much. I'm grateful. Again, if you'd like to comment on this episode, please go to michellekneesat.com forward slash five where you'll find the show notes for this episode. Scroll down to the comment section. I would love to hear from you, comment, question, or whatever. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.